In fourth grade, when we start talking about fractions, we start off by revisiting equivalent fractions. Now, students have touched upon equivalent fractions in third grade, and with that, they do a lot of models. We are including our models in fourth grade, but we take it one step further. So just to review, equivalent does mean equal in amount. So when we're talking about equivalent fractions, we're talking about two fractions that take up the same amount of space. So on this model, you can see this whole is broken into one, two, three, four, five parts, which gives us our denominator. Four of them are shaded in, which gives us our numerator. So if I want to take this and make an equivalent fraction, I want it to take up the same amount of space. If you notice on my other whole, it is not broken into fifths. I have two, four, six, eight. I have 10 equal parts in this whole. That's gonna give me a denominator of 10. Now I need to shade in the same amount of space that is shaded in in my four fifths. Students are very familiar with this as this is the skill they work on in third grade. So I need to make sure I match up my shaded space so it is an equal amount or equivalent. The shaded space will give us our numerator in our equivalent fraction. So now that I have the same equal amount of space shaded in both holes, I just need to count the parts. So now I have two, four, six, I have eight. Eight out of 10 parts shaded in. So my four fifths is equivalent to eight tenths. Now in fourth grade, we take it a step further and we bring multiplication into the mix when we're talking about equivalent fractions. So if I have my eight tenths over here, we need to think about how did I get to eight tenths from four fifths using multiplication? When you are making an equivalent fraction using multiplication, you have to multiply the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator, which is the bottom number, by the same number. That gives you an equivalent fraction. So I know 8 tenths is equivalent, so I can think 5 times what equals 10. I know 5 times 2 equals 10, which means 4 times 2 should also equal 8. If this top answer was not two, I could not use it because it would not be equivalent. But four times two is eight and five times two is 10. That is what makes four fifths and eight tenths equivalent. There are two times as many pieces in my eight tenths. Let's look at another example. So I have the fraction one half and then I have a part of a fraction. So this part of my fraction is giving me a denominator of six. I don't have this whole split into six pieces yet. I have my halves shaded in. So I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna make six equal parts. So now that I have my one half, I have another equivalent fraction, but I need to count my numerator. So I have one, two, three. This means that one half is equal or equivalent to three sixths. I'm also gonna think about the same thing. Two times what gave me that six? And it has to work for the top because to get an equivalent fraction, you multiply your numerator and denominator by the same number. So I know that two times three equals six and I know that one times three equals three. So one half is equal to three six. That's our focus for fourth grade. So we're gonna do one final example without any models. I'm just going to take this two thirds and I'm going to make an equivalent fraction. As long as I multiply my numerator and denominator by the same number, they are equal in amount. They will take up the same amount of space. So I'm going to go with the number four. 2 times 4 gives me 8, and 3 times 4 gives me 12.